Hey guys, in this video, we are going to go over how to build the Expert Mount Drive Vehicle Kit. Now with every kit, you get a USB drive. And this USB drive has your practice log, build instructions, and all the scientific concept and future improvements that you could make to this vehicle. So this will just be going over the steps that are already described in your uh, build instructions, but we're just going a little bit more in detail. And there'll be timestamps in the description. And if you have any questions or concerns in any point or in any steps that I discuss in this video, you can either leave them in the comments below and I'll get to them as fast as possible, or you can just email me directly and you can find my email on my website, or you can just email contact at unfazed.com. With that said, let's get right into it. All right guys, so our first step is to set up the front chassis. So for this, you're going to need this front chassis piece, four of these 14 centimeter long carbon fiber tubes, the dowel rod holder, and then the ball bearings. So the way you want to set this up is you first want to take out your bearings, and then you want to take some super glue here I have Gorilla Glue, and you can use any type of CA super glue you want. And then you just want to put a bead of super glue on this ball bearing. Let me show you. A bead of super glue on the ball bearing, and then you stick that ball bearing into this holding right here. Let me see. All right. And you do that to both sides of the bearing, and then you just let that dry for a few minutes. After you got the ball bearings in, we're going to take this dowel rod holder and we're going to see these four holes. We're going to line these four holes up with the four holes that are on this front chassis piece. All right, the ball bearing just fell out. I didn't put any glue on it. I just showed you guys how to do it. All right, well, let's remove these ball bearings and I'll show you how to do it. So you want to push these four uh, carbon fiber tubes through these four holes. It takes a little bit of effort to push them through the holes on the chassis, but afterwards it's pretty easy. So yeah, just get these in, all the four holes. All right, so this is what it should look like after you put in all of your carbon fiber tubes. You should have their tubes glued into the front chassis piece, but do not glue in the dowel rod holder. This will be done at the end of the build because if you build your compound lever in a different type of way, then it might interact with your dowel rod holder and it'll just be a mess. So only glue it into the front chassis piece and then we'll deal with the other parts later. All right, next step is to take these two 29 centimeter long carbon fiber square tubes and you can tell them apart because they're both marked, they have a marked F on there. And F stands for front. So you want the side that's closest to the ed edge to be pushed into the front chassis piece, as I have here. And then you want to stick the bolts upwards and then screw in the nut and then tighten it with a screwdriver. The reason we stick it up is so that, um, so that when it's rolling, these uh, screws don't actually hit the floor. So after you do this and you screw that in, you wanna take the two back chassis pieces that have the ball bearings already installed. So these two. And what you want to do is you want to have the bearings pointing each other. They should point each other when they are, uh, when they're on your carbon fiber tubes. So this one points inwards, so we want this one to sit here. And this one points inwards, so we want this one to sit here. So you kind of see how that is. The, both the bearings are pointing at each other. And then you just take the screws and you push the screws inwards as well. All right. Screws pointing inwards, and then you take a nut and you screw that in. Now, right after that, you just want to take this eight centimeter long carbon fiber square tube, and you just want to connect it at the square inserts. Let me see if I can zoom in. Hopefully you can see that, but there's these square inserts on the back chassis pieces that you just slide this piece into and you glue it in place. All right, now we're going to assemble the compound lever system. So what you need are these three compound levers. You'll need the one and a half inch screw and then three nuts from the hardware bag. So the way you want to set this up is you want to have, find the one that has, that is marked one. 
This is the one where it's going to be the front and you can tell because it has this little hole on top. These other two have, have, uh, have guides on them. If you can see that, they're guides. And they just guide the string towards the drive axle in a hexagonal fashion. And they all three have these little back pieces that they're connected by and that allows them to pivot. But only the one with number one has a hole through the actual carbon fiber piece at this area and that's for zip tying it to the mousetrap. So the way you want to assemble this is take the one labeled one and you want to orient it so the flat side, so this side has a side that sticks out a little bit here and a side that's flush with the carbon fiber piece. You want the side flush with the carbon fiber piece to go to the head of the screw, like so. And then you want to take a screw and you want to thread that in. All right, after that, take you can take these in either order, it does not really matter, but you just want to make sure the flush piece is going forward into the screw. So the flush piece down, and then you take another screw, put that in, all right. All right, and you take the third piece flush side down. So flush side hits the screw, and you just tie that in. All right, now that we got our compound lever done, we're going to actually set up the mouse trap to actually set up our compound lever. So what you need are these braces, and you can tell them apart from everything else because they are shaped like this for one, but they also have an R. And the R signifies that this should go on the right side of the chassis. So if you can remember that the R side has basically two holes, let me pull this over, it has basically two, closest to two holes on there, focused, all right? And you wanna put that on the right side of the chassis and line it up with the holes. So you have one set of holes right here and here and one set of holes right here and right here. So let me just set that up real quick, all right? So line that up with this, these holes and you can remove the tape, you don't need that, it's just there to tell you that that is the right side. And then you want to line up the car, or not the car, the mousetrap. Mousetrap has four holes, right? Move that away. Right, four holes, and you want to line up those four holes with these four holes on the right side. So I'm not going to actually assemble that, I just want to show you how it's going to be set up. So, mousetrap should sit right here, and like with this, you want to point the screws on this side. This side of the screw, this side of the chassis, the screws should be pointing upwards. However, on this side of the chassis, you want the screws to be pointed downwards. Now, the reason for this is because the mouth shaft gives some leeway, so these screws will not hit the floor when it's completely built. However, this does not have that same leeway, and you will want to have the screws be pointing upwards. All right, so I'm gonna quickly show you how to attach the uh, compound lever arms to the mouse trap. And this is, I want you to imagine, want you to imagine that this is already on the chassis, okay? And this is the side that's pointing towards the center of the chassis. So if I bring the chassis here, the mouse trap will be sitting like this, and this side is closest to the center of the car. So the way you actually wanna set this up is you wanna take the two or two out of two of the five provided uh, zip ties, and then what you want to do is you want to thread one zip tie. You see this center hole right here. It goes through the piece. Let me show you guys. Yeah, you can see there's a hole. You want to thread this zip tie through that hole. So hold on, if I can push it through. All right. So one zip tie should go through this hole, and what you can do is you can put the head under the mouse trap. Real quick, all right, pull that in. And then you just want to zip them together. And you don't want to zip them together just anywhere. You want to do it where the spring is. So you see where the mouse trap spring is? You want the zip tie to connect to your arm right here from this spot. So let me just do that real quick. And you want to make sure you're compound lever is sitting where you want it to be exactly. All right, so I just loosely zipped it here. Now, the next thing you want to do is you actually want to take a pair of pliers and pull on this zip tie a little bit harder. 
Now the reason we use pliers and pull on the zip tie is that it makes it super tight and you don't actually need any glue. You just have to zip it together really tight. So now that this is connected where we want it to be, and the next thing we gotta do is we gotta take the second zip tie and connect it to the front of this mouse trap. So let me set that up real quick and show you how it looks. All right, so you pull the mouse trap up, get the zip tie under the bar, and now we got it where we want it. All right, I gotta flip it over. All right, all right. And now we just thread it through and zip it down and we should be good to go. Let's just do that. Oops. It can be a little finicky, but this is definitely the best way to attach your levers to the mousetrap. Now you wanna move this up all the way up so it's at the top of the bar and that this is all the way at the bottom. So it should look something like this. And now to ensure that this will stay like this for the rest of your usage of the car, you wanna take your pliers again and just pull on it. All right, so now it's pretty secure and it probably won't move away. See, it looks, it's pretty secure. And you can cut these off right after you're done pulling them. All right, so I'm just going to show you how the arms are connected. So they're basically connected using the fishing line provided in the kit and the way they're connected, if we look at this, like my beta version of this car, the three arms are at a 60 degree angle and you can measure that with a protractor, but the angle itself is not the main focus of this. You can have these at about 60 degrees. You don't necessarily have to have them at exactly 60 degrees, but the way they're connected is you have the one front, it's all the way down. This one is, the second arm is 60 degrees from that and the third arm is 60 degrees from the second arm. And the way they're connected is you tie the fishing line onto the first, onto the first arm and you just tie it also to the second arm and you pull it taut so that this arm is at a 60 degree angle when the arm will be fully pulled. The next step is to take the third arm and tie the third arm through this hole, if you can see that, through this hole to this other arm, the second arm, through this hole. So every arm is connected with the hole on the lever arm. And they're all at 60 degree angles, as seen with this car, if you can see it. Let me show you, let me see if I can pull it down. Uh, hopefully you can see that. Let me, let me try and zoom out, I guess. Um, all right, so you, you can see this string connects two and three, and this string connects one and two. And now the third arm is connected with the holes on the chassis. So there are back holes on the chassis right here and right here. And you can connect, connect it to either hole, but um, sometimes when you're making your chassis, the arms stick out to either the right or the left. And what you wanna do is you wanna stick it up to the opposite side. So these arms originally, when I had them on my mousetrap, they were, oh, you can't see that. These arms, when they were on my mousetrap, they were sticking back. So this arm, let me try and show you a different angle. So this is how they are now, but before they were sticking out to the left and it wasn't necessarily straight. So what I did is I took some fishing line, I tied it to the third arm first, and then I taught, made it taut to the side on the right. And I pulled it so that now this arm is straight. So you can counteract if your arm is right or left by either tying the string to either the right side of the mousetrap car or the left side of the mousetrap car using either of the two holes on the back. Now you only have to use one hole, you don't have to use both, but you, you have to tie it to the car through one of these holes. Now the next step is to set up your wheels and axles. So you get four Bainbot wheels and then four 3D printed wheel hubs. And the way you wanna set these up is you wanna put some super glue onto the edges of these hubs and then you wanna stick the hubs into your wheels. Some hubs are make a tighter fit on the wheels than others, 
but for most cases you will need some super glue. So let me just push these in real quick and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. So it takes a little bit of force, not too much force, but you may need a little bit of force to get these wheel hubs into the wheels. And that's ultimately for, ultimately for the better because your wheel won't be wobbling on the hub. So I got them all in and presumably you would have put super glue on these hubs, but I have not just for the purposes of being able to reuse these for future demos. So now that you got this in, you want to take your 20 centimeter long carbon fiber tube and the other 15 centimeter long carbon or not 15, 14 centimeter long carbon fiber tube and then take a ruler and once you have a ruler, let me find one real quick. Here, all right. Take a ruler and you want to measure three centimeters back. So this is the edge, three centimeters back from both edges. So I would mark something right here and right here. And you want to use either a pencil or silver Sharpie because otherwise you won't be able to see it. So just like I said, three centimeters from this edge and three centimeters from this edge. So there'd be a mark here and a mark here. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to do the same thing to 20 centimeters. So three centimeters from here, three centimeters from here, mark it there, mark it there. Next thing you want to do is take some masking tape and you want to wrap tape around the place you marked until these axles or the tape wrapped portion of these axles fit snugly into the ball bearings. So if I can show you this car real quick again. Let me zoom, let me just zoom in. All right, so there's an example of what I'm talking about. So I have tape on these axles, right? So the tape is wrapped up like three centimeters away from the edge of each rod. And then there's only enough tape so that this axle fits snugly into the ball bearing. Now, the reason we do this is so that the there is little to no play and that there, your car is going to be going a little bit straighter and if it's not going straight, it's still going to be more consistent because there's no variability in the positioning of your axle during your car's um, movement. All right, so the next thing you actually want to do is you want to finish up your car. So the way we do that is we take the rest of our fishing line, we tie it up to this front portion right here, and then we thread it through, let me show you guys, we thread it through each of the three arms. So there's little holes on each head Zoom in. All right, so the little holes on each of the other two heads and you just thread the string through there, through there, and then you uh, you basically attach it to the drive axle with another zip tie and then you just use super glue to reinforce that. Now after that, we wanna set up our inning mechanism. Now here I have cardboard, but you won't actually get cardboard. You actually get some nice and nifty styrene Slots. So these styrene slots are going to be your aiming mechanism. You basically glue one aiming mechanism slotted sheet to the back and then the other to the front. Let me show you guys. One to the back and then you glue other the other one to the front. So other one would go something like this right here and that would be good to go. So basically everything with your car is should be done at this point. The last thing you need to do is actually set up your aiming block so with your or your yeah your aiming target block so your target block you get this carbon or cardboard sheet with some tape and this center line drawn on and you also get this wood block now the way this sets it up is you turn it to the back you have a section called block here so what you do is you take your wooden block and you put some glue on it and you just do it on now you can reinforce this with tape or what have you but that's up to you. All you need to do is, at the very least, you can just glue it on with some super glue you have lying around, or you can tape it on, whatever floats your boat. But that should, that's how you set up the aiming block. And in a future video, I'll be going over how to calibrate your car. So uh, don't worry too much about it if you're not able to calibrate it right now. I'll be going over that in very much a lot of detail, so you should be good to go. And also thank you guys for the massively positive response to these kits. I got a bunch of orders and most of these orders will be going out today or tomorrow, depending on when you ordered it. If you ordered something today, it'll, it'll be shipped out tomorrow. If you ordered something on Wednesday or, or excuse me, if you order something on Thursday 
or Tuesday or Wednesday, it's all being shipped out today. Thank you guys for your patience. I'll catch you guys next time. Stand faced.